Hello, everyone, and uh, welcome back to episode five of Anime on Draft. As we said last week, uh, we're going to change it up a little bit, and I'm going to be hosting. So, as always, I'm Drew, joined by my co host, Alec. Hey, yo, what's up? And Rolando. What's up? A little bit of a special episode this week. Rolando has graced us with his presence, and uh, we are all together in the same room. First time ever. That's right. So. We're all together here, um, ready to try out this format, see how it goes. And uh, if you guys think, you know, it, it, it worked out and you'd like to hear more of this sort of thing, uh, drop us a, uh, a line on the WordPress. We're uh, hoping the flow is a little more, you know, flowy. Exactly. It's more coherent. Yeah, that, that, yeah, that, that word. <laughs> more flowy. Let's just go with that. <laughs> flowy like the ocean. Exactly. Get um, some foam. <laughs> right on. So, uh, again, welcome, everybody. Um this week, our beer uh, we're going to be talking about is the uh, Duchess de uh, Bour- Bourgogne. It is a uh, Flanders Red Air, uh, Ale Sour. Um, super interesting beer, so we're really looking forward to talking about that. We're also, again, going to talk about uh, Attack on Titan, as always. Um, concentrating a little bit less on Soccer Quest this week. Um, and we're going to delve a little bit more into the world of Aramanga Sensei and, uh, you know, the Emotos involved with that. And uh, again, Sakurata Reset, we'll talk about that as well. Um, there'll also be a little bit of time at the end to talk about some of the other shows that we're watching. So look forward to that. So let's get right into it, guys. Uh, are you ready to pour out these uh, lovely looking sours? It's, mm-hmm. It smells good. I can already smell it from here. So Yeah, I've got mom poured yeah. out. So so uh, what's the first thing you guys kind of notice? Uh, Rolando, you want to start us off? Um. There, you don't really get the sour too much from the smell, mm-hmm. but uh, you you get it in that it's got the barnyard smell still. Though. Yeah, it's got that. It's got a it's got a nice tart flavor to it. The uh, the head of it reminds me sort of like a nitro. It's like a very thick and creamy uh, mm-hmm. sort of head, and almost no carbonation that I can I can see at all. I poured mine like crap. It's so, dark. Uh, yeah. it's Although really if you do head, look at the side around. of the glass, you can see some of it rising. Mm-hmm. And then take a sip. Yeah, if I point it into the light, I can see a little bit more carbonation, but super, super dark, dark burgundy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's really dark. the The foam or the the head is like a cream mm-hmm. color almost. Um, the smell, you know, you definitely get you get kind of s- aspects of the typical sour that kind of barnyard um, smell. So kind of like the raspberry. Mm-hmm. Um, you get fruity smells, although I don't think there's fruit in it, but it's got that. Yeah, but same. like the, the the tarty smell and mm-hmm. like liquid yogurt. Flavor, yeah, essentially. Yeah. <laughs> that's uh, that's how I keep trying to describe sours to people who don't know what they are. Well, what's nice about this sour, like <clears throat> um, like if you've if you had like the. What was it the frambois? Oh, the, the Lindemans. Yeah. Uh, the frambois. The raspberry Lambic. Raspberry. They got pear. Bunch like, of yeah, those like those ones, like there's the specific color, mm-hmm. like matching the. Yeah. That's why it's kind of fun flavor. to drink the raspberry one because it's just it's pink. Just, yeah. yeah. But this one is like dark. Yeah. When I think of Lambics, though, I think more of like a mead flavor, um, very sweet, uh, mm-hmm. carbonated, whereas this, it, it doesn't really get that. Um, I don't know what you guys, if you agree with that or not, but like Lambics for me are definitely lighter and more of that mu- kind of honey mead-ish mm-hmm. sort of flavor. I think it comes down to brewing and how it's brewed. I know um, I did a little research because I remember when I took my beer class in college, we talked about sours and they kind of have an interesting origin story, if you will. So it's uh, originally they were they were brewed in wooden vats in the ground, just open to the air. And so the reason we get this like barn, the, the barnyardy smells and the, the different interesting kind of odd flavors kind of like that is because you just get bacterias and different yeast just hopping in there from from wherever and so that's what kind of that gives them the distinctive smell that they have and and flavor um and the one we're drinking right now the red flanders i think sticks true to that brewing process and they're done in vats a lot of lambics these days are done in barrels i believe so interesting little little knowledge for you an interesting process Mm -hmm. um that goes into these not a not a you know, a stereotypical beer that you would go out and and be drinking a lot of. I think they're kind of heavy and a little bit harder to drink. Um, You have to have a good one. Otherwise, you get that 
baby diaper. Like, yeah, right. yeah. This is one of the better ones I have, but I think I would be done after one. Like a, we have a pretty tall glass here, um, about a, a maybe a little bit less than a pint glass, and it's it's a lot. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's a lot to drink. It's it's tasty, but it's it's it doesn't have you know it's it's not your stereotypical session beer or anything it's like that. Kind of ironic how popular sours are getting now because sours are like they're a real old style of beer, and people have taken years to try and get away from <laughs> all of right. this kind of thing. And now they're like, Ooh, let's make them again. This is delicious. Also, a lot of people tend to shy away from sours. It's not like the kind of, mm-hmm. um, f- flavor that a lot of people think of with beer. Nor the smell. Nor the smell. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It has a, a sort of like tinny sort of wine-ish flavor. So more, if you're a big wine drinker, um, sours might be kind of up your alley, especially a red wine, a, a good dry red wine. It has a smell of a exactly, red wine as well. for sure, for sure. Um, you can taste the fermentation. I, I, I prefer to stay away from the, uh, the diaper analogy. <laughs> it's not exactly the most appealing sure. of analogies, sure. but and that's for a bad one. If right. you have a bad one, it'll... Tastes like band-aids and baby diapers. <laughs> well, uh, interesting fact is uh, the Duchess is actually the first sour I've had. Really? It was the very first one. Mm. The first I had, I think, was it's probably that Lindemann's ramber- raspberry framboise. I almost said ramberry framboise. Ramberry, ramberry framboise. Oh, ramber. <laughs> ramber. <laughs> the raspberry framboise. So. They, always, they always have to pick interesting names for them, I think. Uh, mm-hmm. Going back to that old world uh, or old timey uh, a lot uh, of convention or whatever. <laughs> if I remember there was like a, there was like a, it was like a university or something they found in uh, like an old like pot in China. It was like a beer recipe. And they reproduced it, and it was very like sweet and sour. Mm-hmm. Like that's how a lot of uh, beer was back, you know, like a long time ago. So like very different from what we've got now. Mm-hmm. They've taken, you know, many years to get away from that. <laughs> right. <laughs> and now a lot of people want it back. And I keep I keep talking about the the drinkability and like the more the more the taste numbers in my mouth, the more I want more. So it's kind of mm-hmm. it's kind of got this addicting yeah. sort mm-hmm. of uh, sort of uh, flavor going on to it because it's like you drink it and you're like this is this is good, but you know maybe I'll take a rest from it. And then you're like, whoa, wait, you get the lingering yeah. and stuff like that. I, I, I need to take another sip of that. Yeah, so. it's it's kind of like for me that's why it reminds me of yogurt because I'll go mm-hmm. and I'll get yogurt and I'm like, well, I'll eat it slow because I eat, I think I'm gonna eat it slower than ice cream because I eat ice cream super fast and I'll take a bite. And I'm like, I want more of that tart. No, no, and then yeah. I end up the whole thing's gone like right, right. away. Right. Um, so well, uh, let's go ahead and rate this guy. Um, Alec, you want to start us off with uh, what you think about it? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, in terms of like sours I've had, this is one of the better ones by far. Um, I haven't too. I, I've had a lot of lambics, like the the different fruity fruit lambics. Um, in terms of sours, I've only had a few. Um, this one keeps the qualities of like a a, a sour that you expect, and um, and it kind of. It just it doesn't bring in the bad aspects, you know, the baby, baby diaper and all the things that <laughs> the the barnyard smell that you you is so typical with a lot of uh, sours isn't overpowering. So if if you want to get into sours, but you're afraid of, you know, you pick it up and you smell it and you're like, this smells like horse butt or, you know, not quite. But this is one to go for. Um, So for sours, I, I would give this about a four and a half. That's that's my opinion as a as a sour Um lover here so pretty pretty generous there uh rolando what do you think uh yeah um this being the first sour i've had um i actually haven't had this since uh, i want to say like a couple years i'm i like i like sours but like i'm not usually always in the mood for it but this is a beer that's very easy to drink um i do like that it's not too too tart or too sweet, um, as like the the framboise lambic, the the raspberry one specifically. That tends to be very sweet, and like I usually can't have more than a glass of it before I get tired. Mm-hmm. This I could probably drink like the full, um, full like big bottle of it. <laughs> that's a tall order because that's I, a champagne bottle. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, like it's you know it's like when you're in the sometimes you're in the mood for wine. Mm-hmm. Like you just end up drinking a whole bottle sometimes. <laughs> okay, maybe that's me. <laughs> I've had half a bottle. I've never um, gone for a whole bottle. But because um, I'm afraid of the hangover. <laughs> this I could do that with the 
the Raspberry Frambois, maybe not. I I need to expand my horizons in terms of lambics, but I you know this one's like a four for me. Right on. Um, I think for me, it's it's not going to be as high. It's um, it's good. It's like I said, it's it's got that addicting quality, um, and it's it's interesting and different. Um, but for me, I I would probably rate it like maybe a three and a quarter. Um, it's good. I like sours. They're they're not my favorite, and they're you have to be in the mood to have one. And this isn't a beer that I'm gonna go out and buy, you know, unless I'm like specifically craving a sour or something like that. So a little bit lower for me uh, in that regard, but still good, still delicious for what it is. Um, and yeah, any any last comments before uh, we move on, guys? No, no, I think that's awesome. Pretty good, awesome. So. Let's move right into um, our net first anime topic. We're going to be talking about um, Attack on Titan, um, and we just uh, ended up rewatching it all together. Um, so we're kind of raring, raring, raring to go and uh, start talking about this guy. Heck yeah! A um, couple of interesting things that happened in this episode. Um, you know, we have uh, Ymir's um, transforming into the Titan. We saw that at the beginning of, uh, or sorry, at the end of last episode. But the episode starts off kind of in this uh, snowy flashback. Uh, we're in the uh, back in the training days of the 104, um, and you know 501st. <laughs> and uh, you know we have um, everybody coming in. There's a giant blizzard, snowstorm. Uh, uh, Krista Ymir and uh, some idiot named Daz um, <laughs> are lost in the woods. Basically, clearly um, can't handle his own shit. <laughs> exactly. Uh, but some some kind of interesting things happened out there. Some revelations, some promises, uh, stuff like that. Uh, Rolando, do you want to talk about those at all? Uh, yeah. So we we what, what we were talking about last episode is that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I'm finger gunning. Yeah, Alec people. is finger gunning. Um, <laughs> what we talked about last episode was we're probably going to get the backstory of Krista and um, Ymir. And so initially, what I assumed was that they knew each other from a long time ago, but mm-hmm. this is actually like back during their scout training. It's relatively recent. Yeah. yeah. And so, um, yeah, turn it that way. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, can't so <laughs> it's a new setup. Yeah. Um, we, where was I? Um, <laughs> you thought, you, they yeah, no, no, we, we thought, we thought that ago. they, they, they'd known each other for a while, but, um, actually we find out they're actually in scout training and Krista is like trying to save this Daz guy, this Daz guy from dying. But like Emir Leave kind of him. sees through, through it and sees that she's actually just trying to, die heroically and like take this dude down with her because she clearly like can't drag this dude down and the she mountain. hates him and she's like she small like, she's like four foot yeah. nothing she, yeah. and like can't, no mass can't years carry old. like a <laughs> basket of fruit or whatever like <laughs> she she's clearly not coming out alive and um like amir says like oh like you know you could just ask me for help but you're not so clearly like your motives are somewhere else and so we find out that she's like some like illegitimate child of a noble and they basically just ship her off to become a scout mm-hmm. to, instead uh, of uh, killing her. I think yeah, instead of she had to her. change her. If she changed her name, they wouldn't kill her. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So she changed her name and she didn't die. And now yeah. she's a scout. And so. then, so she becomes the scout and still wants to kill herself. Just like we found out last week. They were probably hoping she'd change her name, become a scout and then die. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then that's where we come to like the main, um, or the current time where, and beer turns into a titan jumping off the, the castle wall <laughs> yeah um you talked a little bit about um her back krista's backstory in particular um she's talking to our ymir is eavesdropping um during one of the another flashback a flashback within a flashback um ymir Inception. is eavesdropping right Ymir is eavesdropping on um, a couple of uh, church um, pastor, cultists, whatever you want to call them. And, you know, overhears, um, you know, about Krista. She's this Ill- illegitimate child, um, stuff like that. You know, she can't succeed, uh, succeed you know, her, fa- her father, whoever it happens to be within the church. So, again, gets shipped off. But uh, one thing I wanted to talk about was uh, in the ending scene, um, the ending uh, song, we, we get the imagery of... Um, that uh, older, probably a priest or a cultist, whatever you want to call them, um, over these small children who are then feasting on like a dead titan or something. They're eating, you know, a bloody 
mess of something. Uh, but again, we, we saw it again and it was, they were all blonde. Um, so again, it, we talked about it last week as well, but the, the blonde imagery of royalty, um, that whole kind of symbolism thing right there. So I thought that was, uh, kind of important to point out. Also the fact that, um, before we get back to present day, um, the eye imagery, um, Krista's eyes, when they zoom in on her, um, we get that more like super detailed, vibrant blue color. Um, so I thought that was that was kind of important to uh, point out as well. So mm-hmm. she's going to be important. That's why her eyes are big. <laughs> <laughs> One thing I noticed um, in terms of shot composition is a lot of times when they show Krista, they sh- they use a semi um, low angle shot. So like you're looking at her from below, and like usually like when you think about like low angle shots in in film, it's like giving power to the person that you're looking at superhero and so like that kind of like adds to this idea that you mentioned about like royalty um, well and it's especially because she's so short too yeah but a lot of times you know she looks larger than life and the only times where she's put back down into uh that spot where she's you know short and low is when she's talking with the mirror yeah they have that shot of them you know staring into each other's eyes with like the sun coming up and stuff like that uh in the winter flashback and that's really the only time in the episode where you see, you know, that she's this tiny little thing um, compared to Ymir, who's, you know, basically a giant over her um, or a titan, if you want to say that. <laughs> but uh, definitely that imagery, I think, is is, is super important. Um, but uh, we'll move on. Um, so Ymir transforms, um, starts going ham, uh, runs into a little bit of trouble. Uh, Alec, did you want to talk about that a little bit? When she's fighting the other Titans at the bottom of the castle. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Uh, so let me see what I have written here because um, there were there was one thing that I actually wanted to go back to when they were at the training because sure. Ymir mentioned that um, <clears throat> she had a similar background to Krista. So, uh, you know, that's interesting. Is she from a royal family as well? But she's got the dark hair, so mm-hmm. maybe she's of the church or, you know, cold She turns or, into a titan. It sounded like she, she was kind a of a, a bandit too. You know, she's mm-hmm. borrowing things uh, to stay alive and uh, stuff like that. So she's she's got a little of a, of a rough past. I think maybe that was more what they were going for. Well, because she that. said um, she didn't want her... Ch- uh, she decided not to change her name is what she said mm-hmm. too at one point where Krista did. And then, so anyways, I thought that was interesting. Um, but when they were fighting on the tower, um, I think it was, I, I thought that um, from the scene in the, in the snow, she said, when I show my secret, you know, live life for yourself. I thought they were implying that she would have told her what she was yeah. doing, but she, Krista was saying she didn't know. So does she actually not know? It might be the name. Like she may have told her what her name. Oh, what her real name yeah. was. Yeah, that's true because she's supposed to be. I think she knows. Um, I don't know. It's just it's something in the back of my mind said that she she had to have known mm-hmm. um, or had an inkling. Yeah. So if she you know, didn't. So, well, not I don't know necessarily an inkling because if it, that's the only time they had that conversation back then, they didn't even know Aaron could transform at that mm-hmm. point. So I don't know about that, but I, I think she had to have known. Um, just there's I, I don't know if I have any rationale behind that, but I think that, you know, they, they had to have talked about it because she was like, you know, oh, what the hell? You know, I trust her. Um, let me just go ahead and tell her. And then they flash back to the future time. So I don't know. Something something in the back of my mind says that that she knew. And they're all um, asking when she transforms, like why she's been hiding this power, because she she clearly knows that she can right. transform because she, you know, transformed to save Daz <clears throat> and jump off the cliff. Um, so they're wondering why did she save this power? What is, what's her motives? Um, and all that sort of stuff. And, Mm -hmm. and, uh, and it cuts to that scene that they showed in the previous episode where Reiner and his, and his buddy and his other buddy who gets eaten by a Titan. Um, it turns out it's Ymir eating that dude. So like, what was she just a Titan before? And she like gained humanity and stopped being a Titan and then could transform or, or maybe she was then learning to control the power. Mm -hmm. We remember that Aaron had almost no control when he first transformed. He was driven by emotion. Mm -hmm. Uh, So maybe it has something to do with that. She loved the guy so much that she wanted to eat him. She loves Ymir. (laughs) She loves the Krista. Sorry. (laughs) But she didn't eat her. She like going back to this control thing. Like she is the most controlled out of all of all of the three that we know of. So like we have Aaron, Annie and her that we know mm-hmm. for sure um, are like hybrid Titans. She seems to have the most control because she can talk yeah. in Titan form. When she says, uh, if you want to live in broken speak, yeah. it was mm-hmm. like, you live 
grab me. <laughs> like, because yeah, I, I believe Annie could only yell, right? She yeah, could just scream. Like, yeah. And Aaron could just scream, mm-hmm. I believe. Mm-hmm. So, but he can control anything with that. He just was screaming. Yeah, right. he's, uh, he was just being typical Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cool. So maybe she's closer to the Beast Titan, who maybe. can speak eloquently, write poetry. But they know she's an enemy, though, so that's an interesting thing. Yeah. They know. Maybe it's just because she was attacking them. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Eating people. <laughs> I, I think like uh, so I think it was Connie or somebody says like you know an enemy to humanity. So you know we don't know necessarily know if um, Ymir is concentrating on um, you know helping Annie in as part of that group or if she's just enacting on her own. She was kind of a lone wolf to begin with, so it might just be something like that. So mm-hmm. uh, the last thing I wanted to talk about uh, in this episode is the name of the episode, Historia, and at the end we get that Krista's real name is historia and it kind of triggered me because the only thing i could think about is like is this anime going to turn into index is she just going to be a historia or an index of all this old lore and um you know different things about humanity and is she housing all of this for some reason um i know you've watched the rail Dex series rolando uh, did that kind of remind you of that at all or uh not necessarily i think um it this could just be me assuming things, but like it could just be that they think that Historia is a is something that's viable <laughs> as a name, um, and that's just my assumption. But um, it is. Thank you. I mean, her past is <laughs> her past is so like sketchy, and we like we don't know very much about it. I I think it has a significance, and for them to name the episode after it, yeah. too, I think it, it it has to have some sort of significance uh, in that regard. There's it's a book in Harry weird. Potter called Hogwarts: A History. And personally, I'm going to name my kid a history. Just a that. history, a history, a history. Hist- hist- you're going to make sure you have the particle in front of you. A history. It's all one word. I, I As hate you. I hate you. <laughs> well, you. If you put it together, is there going to be a space or is it going to be? No, it's just a history. Uh, but it's going to be capital A, capital H. Oh, okay. So that history. they don't, they don't. What if they say a history? Then they're wrong. Well, I mean, they and it's how, they, how are they supposed to know? They just have to know. Why don't you put an apostrophe? You no. guys are fucking impossible. <laughs> <laughs> any uh, any other legitimate comments about her name, you guys? Uh, uh, I don't know. No. Not like no. I thought it was kind of, I don't know, kind of in plain sight, like you said. Yeah, hidden yeah, in like, plain like, sight. Like, it's just it's keeping with the theme, at least. Yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, do you guys think Ymir's dead? Or? Oh, she's dead. Yeah. yeah. I think she so. was missing her liver and like a <laughs> her kidney. Spleen. Part her spleen. Her appendix intestines. exploded and mm. it basically blew out her. Well, I mean, her appendix was gone essentially because <laughs> <laughs> the whole like left side or right side of her body was just like bitten into. It was gone. And she had no, no right arm and no right leg. <laughs> oh, awesome. So. Well, uh, looking forward to next week. I think we're going to we're returning to Trost, um, mm-hmm. which is the town that Aaron and Mikasa and Armin are from. We're going to learn about Aaron. I think yeah, I think we're going to finally get into that fucking basement. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Who was he keeping down there? Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, it says kind of he learns lazy, a shocking secret that changes everything. Right. Right. So look at a looking billion f- Mikasa. <laughs> <laughs> looking looking forward to that for sure. Um, next episode called Warrior. All right, moving on to our next topic. Uh, we're going to be talking about Aramanga Sensei, episode four, um, politely uh, entitled Aramanga Sensei. Could you say it's hidden in plain sight? Ha! Please stop. Uh-huh. Okay. okay. Please stop. Sorry. Um, <laughs> anyway, sorry about that. Um, <laughs> we find a, a couple of big revelations in this episode. Um, Elf Yamada Sensei figures out that uh, Sagiri. AKA Masamune's little sister living next door is Aromanga Sensei. Um, we get some great quotes going on. My favorite um, was a big brother doesn't think of lewd things with his little sister. So, uh, you know, we got to keep that in mind, guys, as we move forward. Um, but other than that, I thought I thought it was <laughs> I thought it was a good episode. Um, the one thing that stood out for me is um we we know how kind of how uh, Yamada works and uh, why her stuff is so popular. She uses her personal experience um, to better her writing. And the, the main example of this was in the beginning. She cooks Masamune uh, basically a big lunch and, uh, you know, super delicious. He's like super thankful for it. And then at the end, when he's going home, she goes, 
oh, so now I know how heroines uh, will act or how they feel when um, when I do something, you know, nice for a hero or, you know, whatever the situation happens to be. And he kind of takes that to heart, um, I think, and says, you know, wow, she's she's using this personal experience to better herself as opposed to just trying to force yourself to write and, you know, not necessarily know what you're talking about. Um, Alec, did you have any feelings about that or? Um, yeah, I think it was apparent in the in the way they animated his face after that, that he was definitely like, hmm, I should try that. Um, and, and that was, you know, apparent when he went back and he wrote, you know, he decided to write about his little sister as his as his uh, manuscript for their competition. And it blew uh, Yamada Sensei away in that it, she was like, wow, I can't compete with this. And and that sort of thing. Um, so, and not necessarily that it him. would it would make a good book because there everybody says you know you can't publish this. This is not mm-hmm. going to be good. But the passion that he was able mm-hmm. to portray and you know everything flowed better, it read better, mm-hmm. all that kind of stuff. So a little too personal to publish publish as a book, but mm-hmm. again. Uh, was a lot better than anything that he's ever written before, mm-hmm. I would think would be fair to say. And he can now use that good, like, uh, the good uh, feedback that, like, this is good. You just can't go around saying that your little sister is Aramanga Sensei, essentially, and or, or, you know, be super personal about it. But he's going to use that going forward and s- start making some really good stuff is what I'm thinking. Yeah, yeah, I think it's like a good example of knowing when something is inspired versus something that's you know very forced you know Mm -hmm. like it's that idea of passion in your writing Mm -hmm. yeah definitely um i think one of the other themes that we saw uh, within this episode was the theme of bettering yourself or trying to grow and better your craft we see that with masamune you know writing on something that we kind of talked about before writing on something that he truly is passionate about something that he knows about and then we see that also with uh, Sagiri, she wants to better herself as a um, as a uh, artist. You know, mm-hmm. she's going and researching different things that um, the fight she, scenes. Yeah, the fight scenes, the big the big boobs, um, <laughs> and you know, <anime> titty. <laughs> <laughs> the different the different uh, the different things like that. Um, you know, just trying to better herself, trying to become a better artist. Um, did you want to add anything to that, Rolando? Um, yeah, it's it's kind of what stems from her misunderstanding. She's clearly jealous that he's going over to, uh, Masamune is going over to Elf, Elf's place and hanging out. And she's all like, she's obviously, she feels left out because he's over there every day. And, um, she's just like jealous. Mm -hmm. And so she kind of feels like she's stealing him from her. And so she's like trying to improve her art so that like he won't leave her like she thinks she uh, elf is like another illustrator, you know, like she's cheating on him yeah. or he's cheating on her. And right. um, so like it's kind of funny because he's trying to prevent her from leaving him and she's doing the same thing. <clears throat> mm-hmm. It's just rot with rot with misunderstandings in this mm. episode. Mm. <laughs> mm. Yes. <laughs> like at the end when uh, when she says I'm in love with somebody and he's like. Oh, oh yeah, you, you shit. Just, <laughs> and then that's when everyone's like, "Ah, oh, it's like this stupid." I just want to know how, about... how can you logically think, "Oh, she's in love with somebody." She doesn't leave a room, bro. Like, who else could it it's be? Like, this dumb trope or, that we keep running into, or this like dumb misunderstandings, and it's. I don't know. That part kind of triggered me. <laughs> we we talked about it. We were joking about it earlier when we were watching it. We said uh, can't the, say some of the jokes. The <laughs> well, yeah. the uh, <laughs> <laughs> the author that um, that wrote this light novel that then became the anime or whatever was the same person who did uh, Oriimo, and we've talked about this a little bit in the past. But we, we were joking that. You know, Masamune's big dream with Sagiri uh, to get her to come out of the room is, you know, he wants to write this little uh, this little sister uh, anime and that, or light novel that it's going to become an anime. And then when they're going to go out into the room and watch it together. So we were joking that um, he's actually Masamune is writing Oriimo <laughs> and then getting it, you know, published and uh, turned into an anime. And so they're just going to go into their uh, living room and watch Oriimo together. So. <laughs> and then bang. Right. <laughs> it's well, an anime. That's implied. It's an anime. <laughs> About right. Well, I mean, it's implied because of how Oriimo's ending went. Yeah. 
I, I don't know if we want to delve into that at this point, guys. But no, she don't. left her room at the end. <laughs> it might. It she might. took one step out. <laughs> I know. If I will. For and then sure went back triggered. in her room. Yeah. If we, if we start talking about Oreo, there's going to be a fist fight in this room. So. Gonna, <laughs> between them two, I'm going to sit here and watch. No, I. I think Drew, you agree with me that you don't agree w- with Kirino winning. I mean, I don't agree. I I like the ending. I thought it was okay. Like it wasn't the the greatest outcome, but I mean, the tension in this room is just staggering. <laughs> you can you can cut it with a knife. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, the end. I think they could have done the ending a little bit better. They they were doing stupid stuff where it's like you it, know the what bothered me the most about it was okay. Yes, you and choose Rwanda with a rebuttal. You choose Kirino. She's l- actually his little sister. <laughs> Sorry, blood related. And then they have this dumb agreement that it's like, oh, yeah, you know, like we're going to, you know, like be going out. Uh, we're going out. And then but only for like a month. <laughs> <laughs> and then we're back to normal. And then Kyosuke is all like messed up every other relationship he has with everyone else to do this and then is basically just fucked what like he could have had the next door neighbor girl but kirino literally fucking fucking hates her well she fought her they literally fought fought each other he lost he lost isa the the yandere girl who was living with him and cooking him meals and doing all this stuff for him he lost the class. Oh, he kind of dodged a bullet with that, honestly. Yeah, yeah well, I, I like ISA. <laughs> I thought she was the best character, like, <laughs> female lead, but she was crazy. He lost cosplay chick, the one who was Metadu or whatever. Lost her. She's gone. Lost uh, Kuro Neko, who's voiced by the goddess. Um, lost her, you know... I thought she was like the best love interest. She was definitely the best love interest and she would have literally done anything that he said, but he's too fucking stupid to enact on anything. Well, he's obsessed with his fucking little sister. Like, I mean, (laughs) we guys, we just need to go back to the quote. We just need to think about this. You know, a big brother doesn't think lewd things about his little sister. And these are these are words to live by. Something something I can take from that, having not watched Aura Emo and listening to you guys right now, is clearly the writer learned something after writing. Are you sure? Because he's writing this. But that quote, a a big brother should not be lewd with his little sister. Yeah, but like like what Drew said, like I instantly thought the same thing that like he's gonna have Masume write Aura Emo in this. Yeah, but but he's not being lewd with his little sister. They're not. Well, they're also they're not. They're also related. Not related. This time. They're yeah, not exactly. related this time. So. so he learned something. Don't make them related. <laughs> well, I think I think we could go on about this forever, and uh, I know uh, a couple people listening who would love to chime in about this uh, this Oriemo conflict. But uh, yeah, we'll, about, we'll... about certain trash. <laughs> Drop us a comment on our YouTube. Sorry, Kaku. <laughs> <laughs> a rip, Kaku. Uh, <laughs> Drop but, a comment. But, uh, but anyway, YouTube. let's uh, let's move on for now. Um, let's talk a little bit about uh, this week's episode of uh, Sakurada Reset. I know uh, this week uh, we wanted to kind of talk about um, consequences um, and the consequences of resetting time and if there are even any at this point. Uh, you guys want to want to go off of that? Um, yeah, so it's it's, you know, this this one wasn't so much uh, kind of philosophical i guess as Mind last fucking. week's episode <laughs> yeah it it's just like mean, shit yeah. happens like it's basically it. uh, what's her name Mar- marissa M- marase Mar- yeah marase uh puts a hand through freaking <laughs> through the main character's head like literally her hand goes blah and his head explodes i honestly like, wasn't God, expecting he, that no to neither was like he just like it got leaned. really graphic it did yeah it was really bloody i was like What's going on? I was sitting there in that scene and was like, I just felt super bad for Haruki because like he like was like, I'm going to need a favor tomorrow, essentially before this happens. Mm -hmm. And I I know he tells her like, you're going to see me die gruesomely (laughs) and I need you (laughs) to be able to overcome that and reset back to this previous save point. But she she didn't like remember anything. No, but he did. Like you know, he planned it because yeah. he told he told the, the guy to send the guy the that sends the message to her, and it was in his voice. Which yeah. Otherwise, she'd be like, no, it's not his voice. Because and she then can't. He's dead She's forever. a robot. <laughs> she can't do anything um, unless he tells her to. But in terms of consequences, we see Minami. Is that her name? Yeah, ghost the girl. Ghost girl. They, you know, she died 
clearly. Um, and we find out that her power, she has no power except the power to retain information after dying, becoming Being a ghost. ghost. Um, and, and so we find out that the, uh, and then the, the, the telephone guy, Hitsuchi. Hitsuchi. Um, see, I, I come up with the names like ghost girl, tel- telephone guy, <laughs> girl with the hand that goes through the head. When I, when I write my notes, I look at what, what, what their, their names, names are. are. Oh, okay. Um, mm-hmm. and, and you know, we, we find out he can't eat because he's such a germaphobe, which don't, oh, don't ask me about that. Don't tell him to drink beer. Yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> just drink this drink of bacteria. Especially not a sour, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, he would, he'd kill himself. And so I guess he like sucks information out of people and that's his sustenance. That's his power. And so we find out they go back in time and then Minami's alive and, and all this stuff. And, and it's kind of, I'm not like after this, these pat this episode and the previous episode, it's kind of not really sure if they're really, what they're doing is changing the past at all. Yeah. Like, it's more like just different time. They're just kind of, they're not changing anything. It's like, it's almost as if they're just following a new timeline. Yeah. Like than changing. I, I'm wondering the same the thing after this episode, because like normally you think there is a consequence mm-hmm. because Soma dies in episode two mm-hmm. and spoilers, spoilers. I mean, it's not like we haven't talked about no. it already, <laughs> but uh, like, unless we see, consequences of their actions like in upcoming episodes like i'm not really sure if if there is any because if there if there isn't then like what is the point of soma dying Mm -hmm. so i'm trying to figure out if this is a plot hole or or maybe it's just like poorly written yeah so like this is one of the one of the things where i'm like i'm not sure if i agree with how it's turning out Mm -hmm. like for like the first couple episodes, I thought, you know, it was going pretty well. This one, I'm just like, where it is going on here? You're kind of being a little inconsistent. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I was, I'm, I'm, I'm not really sure. Um, cause there is no consequence. No, oh, let's wait for that. Yeah. Someone's calling. They call or They instantly hung up afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it, like, it seems like in this episode, they're putting it to be no consequence cause they reset multiple times Mm -hmm. with zero consequence which he dies and then comes back oh i mean (laughs) he dies and comes back minami dies and comes back Mm -hmm. so kind of wondering what's going on not he's not also not the only one that remembers previous Mm -hmm. timelines because hitsuchi the information sucker remembers stuff Mm -hmm. um if murase uses her ability on her whole body she can remember what happened she doesn't even change position no, because they reset. He went back to the rock he was standing on and she was still on the ground crying after having him lean his head into her indestructible yeah. hand and making his brains explode. Yeah, <laughs> it's I'm trying to figure out exactly how this happens. Like, I don't know if actually everything is happening within time and that Haruki's ability actually resets matter. That's what they said at the beginning. It doesn't actually go back in time. It makes everyone it makes- forget what happened that day before and it just resets everything to that point. Yeah. So it's like, they'll go two hours. She'll re- save, go two hours. They'll reset. It's been two hours, but it's like everyone is back where they were two hours ago, except that, um, uh, except Soma. Oh yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, well, they couldn't go back for Soma because yeah. they had, uh, saved and then reset. Right. And so the, and it was within 24 it was hours, within the 24 hours. So they couldn't go back for her, but, um, so it's it's she's not like changing the past. So it's maybe that's why there doesn't seem like there's consequences because she's actually just Resetting making everyone everything. forget and then progressing into the future. It's kind of weird how things. like they're treating it like it's actual time travel, but like technically, if the, I think I thought that the way they explained it was that she resets everyone's brain cells to remember things like you know like erase what happened before, mm-hmm. but like. He had a hand in his brain yeah. and died. <laughs> yeah. And he's back, back to alive. Normal. Yeah. Also in episode two, he starts cutting his his yeah. arm and then is all, all of a sudden okay. So yeah. I'm not really sure what's going on. There seems to be a lot of inconsistencies mm-hmm. with this show. That's the other thing I was wondering too, is, is like if they're just resetting their brain. I, I, I don't maybe, know. Exactly maybe maybe it will come full circle by the end and we'll kind of figure out more stuff, kind of like a Stein's Gate sort of deal. Like this will all make sense sort of near the end when we learn a bit a little bit more. But see, that's the thing. Like with Stein's Gate, it wasn't really inconsistencies. It was like there were things you just didn't know. Mm-hmm. 
this seems like to have Mm -hmm. conflicting things happening, Mm -hmm, like in terms of like the actual way everything works. Mm -hmm. If anything, it's interesting. It's to interesting see to watch where they're going to go with it. Yeah, I'm, I do like where I, I am the, intrigued by the story, mm-hmm. but yeah. And adding this new character where she could do crazy shit was pretty cool. And then I was like, they just blew his head up. Yeah, that was graphic. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, like, you know, I'm entertained. That's yeah. the main goal and it's That's working. Goal. So, well, right on, guys. Um, again, sounds like a kind of a crazy show. So a bit nuts. We'll, we'll keep we'll keep following that and uh you know, try to figure out what's going on. <laughs> but uh, our final uh, one that we're going to talk about uh, in more depth is a, a soccer quest. We have episode four, the lone alchemist. Um, before we jump into this, I just wanted to mention like the titles of each episode kind of has to deal with like mythological things. Did you guys see that? Or do you think that's significant in any way or? Yeah. Because like the last one was cry of the mandrake. Mm-hmm. The the one that's coming up next is the budding of y- y- uh, y- which is like, you know, the, the world tree, the world tree mm-hmm. um, in Norse mythology. Right, if you right. needed any uh, clarification. <laughs> Why? Well, thank you. I appreciate that. I so forgot there, what it was. There, Cause I thought it was a dragon. There. <laughs> <laughs> slightly sarcastic but not entirely because for some reason it reminds me of the name of a dragon but i forget which one probably something in dark souls <laughs> or wow yeah i would wow call a dragon Yggdrasil. well the, they have Eurissa, who is yeah, the yeah. Uh, the life binder dragon but she's basically the tree no, of she's life the, she's the she's the nature dragon life binder yeah, is tree of life. Alex, uh, she's a dragon. tree dragon well you know she's no a wonder tree. i'm confused my legs. Dragon. Spoiler, she My dies legs. in yeah. the most recent expansion. <laughs> oh. They kill her off and it was sad because she's the coolest. You fly around on her back. She's everybody's grandma. You fly on her back yeah. and then she dies. She's the world's grandma. Basically. Legion spoilers. But she has huge tits. <laughs> Not dragon. in dragon form. Dragon titties. <laughs> no, they're scaled and everything. Uh, but anyway, uh, Rolando, what were you saying about uh, the names? Uh, I don't remember. Nor- Norse or <laughs> mytho- my- mythological names. Uh, oh, no, so. I was just joking with that. Like, <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll keep that in mind. But uh, this episode kind of lighthearted. Um, we have exosuits. I guess that's a thing. That was so cool. <laughs> that was pretty cool. I was like, I want one. I was just like, I want that. Yeah, I, don't yeah, want, yeah. I don't want to put an effort in anything. She's like, she's I don't like, like, work out anymore. She, she, was, she was like running around like, what's up, guys? This is so <laughs> easy to do. Was, like, pretty pretty cool there. That Doku mechanic guy, is, he's a little weird, but he's he's kind of a cool character. I have to say, when she put that exosuit on, I was just like picturing in my head that the thing's going to haywire and it's going to like snap <laughs> her. Like, Cut! And then, oh, her elbow just broken her. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> She's this dead. Is, this is PA work. She's not going to do that. <laughs> I was just, you know, that would be a really funny spoof. If she was like, yeah, <laughs> just like puts her into a square. and she's everybody, just, everybody starts screaming. It's just ah! like the episode just ends. You're like, well, well this, was, this got dark. <laughs> it, it was really cute that, that uh, Ririko was like, she's like so interested in it. She's mm-hmm. just like, I want to try it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So that was that was super cool. Uh, like I said, Doku, he's kind of a crazy cool uh, new character that we get introduced to. Um, but well, all the gr- all the girls are moving in together, guys. Yep. You know what? Uh, what crazy hijinks are they gonna start getting into? <laughs> Burning things. I uh, I don't know about that. <laughs> I, I doubt that. No, no, they're gonna light stuff on fire. <laughs> There's the, gonna be fireworks. It's gonna be lit. Calling it now. They're gonna have they're gonna have sparklers at some point. It's gonna be calling lit. it now. It's gonna, it's gonna be lit. <laughs> Um, one thing I wanted to point out, um, and we talked about this last week as well, was the, um, the old versus new theme. So this episode we have, you know, tradition, which is kind of introduced with this Ranma or the, uh, the wood carving town, the wood carving district versus technology, which was, in, you know, the exosuit, stuff like that. And they try to do this combination and we have conflict, uh, that, which resulted from that. Do you want to talk about that a little bit, Rolando? Yeah. So basically... Um, they're trying to revamp the, the, the Ranma, um, which is like a protected traditional art form, air quotes with, um, with the Japanese government in Monoyama. So we've got, do you remember the name of the guy? The, he's like the guy from Hokkaido. The senior guy? Uh, I I don't remember his name. Grumpy, angry. Grumpy, angry angry dude. Wood carver guy. Um, Wood carver dude. Yeah, who who doesn't follow logic. He's very skilled at at this Ranma. Oh, trigger. But he, 
he gets super triggered by by Yoshino and Sanai for no reason. For no, yeah, exactly. For <laughs> I, I can understand. He's like from a very traditional standpoint, and it's like a traditional art form. So I can see him getting mad that they're trying to you know like interfere in something that they don't necessarily have complete knowledge of. But at the same time, like they're like if you look at what their intentions are, they're trying to help bring interest to what he's doing because like honestly like can you believe that he can be doing this for a living and making enough money to pay rent pay for bills you know eat eat survive in this thing we call life he's in a small town like who is buying Mm -hmm. these wood he's providing services well and and at least if he would go and take the time to kind of educate them on this because they're obviously they they don't know what it is they like it it's a pretty cool art form um but not viable, whatever. But if he would take the time to say, you know, hey, this is why it's important. This is why we do it. This is the tradition of it. Maybe they would understand it a little better instead of just going, you don't know what type of wood this is. Yeah. How yeah. dare you? How dare you even yeah, like, talk to me, you fucking idiots? It's so like, I don't understand. Closed minded. Like, I can understand if he was like, hey, like, I get what you're doing, trying to make this popular, but. Don't like just bring in a random like vending machine and stick it in a wood carving. Mm-hmm, That's a right. little disrespectful of the art form. I've been like trying to be a master at my entire life. Could you find another way to do it? And so he's like, what the fuck is wrong with you? I hate all of you. You're stupid. And then she's like, he's like, why are you doing this? Because I really like the, this wood carving. It's pretty. And I want other people to see it. And then, like Drew said, he's like, See that bucket over there? Yeah, see the wood in it? What type of wood is it? And she's like, I, he's like, you don't know, do you? Then shut up and don't talk about wood carving because you can't like wood carving unless you know what type of wood I use to carve the wood. <sighs> when was the last time a carpenter asked you <laughs> what wood he made the table right? out of? Right. You're like, I like this table. He's like, give me your money. Okay. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, like it, it's, it's completely unreasonable. Or if you go up to a carpenter and you're like, I really like your work. I can't afford it, but I have friends who would like it. I'm going to tell them about it. Do you know what don't kind of wood this table is? <laughs> no? Well, then don't introduce them to my stuff. I don't want to sell anything. I don't want to sell them anything. And so I, I think, you know, kind of like how we've been saying, we have, I think every type of new thing that they're going to try, they're going to always have this conflict between the old and new. You know, we have, you know, at first the uh, the old man who likes all this new stuff, you know, he introduced the Chupacaba versus the old woman, uh, Ru- Rudico's uh, grandmother, who is, you know, ahead of the, the trades, uh, the trades committee and stuff like that. Triggered so, by her as well. <laughs> she's she's totally irrational, but uh, we're not, we're not going to get into that. But again, old versus new there. And then uh, here, you know, we have the old school woodcarver dude versus um, now Sanai, who, um, you know, we can see that she's developing maybe some feelings for him for whatever reason. But, you know, she she's the new she's, you know, with I.T., uh, she's the the computer lady, you know, all that good stuff, and so she's the new versus the old traditional way, and they're they're gonna try to start uh, bumping heads and stuff like that. But um, one last thing near the end of the episode was uh, Sanai has this revelation, um, and she's talking after she's done talking with um, the angry dude. And she goes, you know, maybe I did run away, you know, to come here um, and I'm still kind of searching for myself, but the world kind of moves on without me. Whereas, you know, with the old ways and, you know, the old stuff, you know, we need these kind of people to preserve this art, to preserve, um, you know, this kind of way of life, this tradition, stuff like that. So she kind of has a a revelation there, which I thought was was kind of nice. I was triggered by her thinking as well, actually, (laughs) because because she has this conversation with a grumpy wood carving man. And he's like, oh, you're just running away. And then she goes and has this revelation that she's running away. And then she starts, okay, so I can understand, like, it could be true. Maybe she is running away. But the story they give, I was doing this job. I was working a bajillion hours, tons of overtime. I got sick and went to the hospital, checked myself out when I wasn't better, and then went back to work, found out someone was doing my work, and they didn't need me. So how is that running away? You were literally in the worst situation ever where you're sick in the hospital, and you're like, oh, I have to get away. I have to get away. She's making her life better. How is that running away? You have to understand the Japanese like work ethic and stuff like that. Like in Japan, if you are at work 
and your senior or your senpai is there still working, you cannot go home until they leave. Well, she was saying she got covered for by somebody else. Well, that's just her saying that the world is going on and moving yeah. forward. But the Japanese ideal and work ethic is not logical at all. It's it's based on this court of like um, expected work ethic that is unreasonable. And that's why, you know, there's so much suicide. There's so much, you know, people getting sick, stuff like that. And so I think it's fair to say that she is running away. But the main from a point, bad situation. Yeah, but, but that's, it's not making her. Like, that's how it's going to be everywhere, especially if you're living in the city. So she's running away to escape the city. I think that's a, that's a. Fair but the point. way they made it seem is like she's running away. Like, oh, I'm running away from from this. It's like she's running away from this situation to make her life better for herself. And he's like, he's crucifying her for it. I'm like, dude. You don't even want your own shit to work out. Don't crucify somebody else who's like trying to go out on their own. Anyways, besides that, different different views on on different <laughs> things um, between American and, and Japanese. Obviously, I'm American, so I have a different. Yeah. I have the opinion, you know, like go out, make it on your own. Go out, make it on your own. You know, uh, do do something good. Uh, the last thing I wanted to say about that, though, let me, uh, it's ironic that she was uh, saying that he's the only person who can do what he can do when she's the only minister of it that can do what she can do. So, yeah. well, in that city, in that city. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, it's kind of, you can say the same thing for anything, honestly, like he, you can technically say there could be another skilled artisan that can do his job. Yeah. yeah. I just mean like in the city, she's yeah. kind of becoming what she admires in that sure. guy. So. Sure. Well, cool. Um, any other comments about, uh, about this week's episode? Just triggered. Just triggered. Well, you'll get over it. That's no, the theme of this never, week. Triggered. <laughs> I'm never watching it again. So, uh, like I said, like we have been doing, we had um, a little bit of a longer section here for uh, those four anime. Um, we'll move on now to our happy hour segment. Um, I'm just going to throw it out to you guys if you want to talk about anything here. Uh, I know specifically for the shows I have watched, I have very little to say. Um, Rain at Bokun was the same, so I'm not really going to talk about it. Do you guys have anything you guys want to talk about in particular? Not really. Yeah. Saikano is like they're getting into the game that they're making. Yeah. Um, uh, Tomia kind of is like, oh, like finally choosing between the two manuscripts that Utaha makes. And essentially, he goes, none of these are good. <laughs> so she has to rewrite it. And uh, <laughs> so now that kind of sets them back, but like we'll probably end up making the game that much better. Uh, my, you know, my two sword oratory is really just a different view of what we've already seen from what I've seen so far. Um, it's just <clears throat> different scenes of like, they just had the, where the monsters are escaped into the town. Ice is beating them and, you know, mage girl actually kills something. Um, and then zero, uh, grim Rive zero. It was, it's good. The story is kind of good. Episode. They're going through their adventure on trying to find the book and I'm actually really liking it. The story, I'm actually, the story is getting better for me as the, as the, what was that gif I saw of her like getting drunk and like, Oh yeah. She gets sloshed. <laughs> yeah. She's like, <laughs> 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 Yeah. No, uh, and then, she like goes into the tiger dude's room. It's because mm. she always sleeps on the tiger guy. Yeah. He's like, your fur is so comfy. And he's like, get off me. It's like, like, leave me alone. Bed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the ending was funny. The little blonde haired dude. Yeah. He's like, well, if that's how you're going to treat him, just give me his head. She's like, no, his head belongs to me. He's like, neither of you can have my head. <laughs> like, <laughs> It's it's got it's it's a it's a pretty good well rounded I think it's got good action and like funny. the story and then comedy so right on well uh, that kind of wraps it up for uh, for us here this week unless you guys have anything else to add uh, nope not on my end cool cool it's so um, again you know triggered. If you Theme if you, week, if you want to try a sour, go ahead and check out the uh, Duchess de uh, Borgione, um Red Flander um, Ale Sour, uh, super delicious. Um, so check that out. Also, be sure to hit up the WordPress AnimeOnDraft.wordpress.com. Um, we're we're available Please. on all the other social media platforms, but I encourage you guys to go ahead and check out AnimeOnDraft.wordpress.com. That's going to have. Uh, all the different links, um, different uh, buttons and stuff like that. It'll take you to our SoundCloud, our iTunes, Twitter, all that good stuff. So uh, from us here, I hope you enjoyed. Uh, look forward uh, to next week and uh, we'll see you then. Bye Use guys. the WordPress. <laughs>